Memphis and all the other guys, Todd Frazier, Wilmer Flores. But he didn't put a spark in us. He has to be a leader. He's the he has the manager managerial spot of the New York Mets, and he's not leading us. This is just crazy. Uh, but um, it's just crazy how he's blowing this many games. As I said, coulda, shoulda, woulda. We we could have won five more games, being first place right now. But um, it's it's just weird. Mickey Calway, hopefully he doesn't he isn't in the spot too much longer. But hopefully the season ends up on not too bad of a note. But um, it, back to the draft thing. We just we are offering three million dollars to our um one of our draft picks. It hasn't been confirmed what who it is, but he's being offered three to four million dollars. I I'm guessing it's one of our high schoolers, as high schoolers are usually the hardest to get. Um, high schoolers are usually the hardest to get, as they want to attend college maybe or get play get one of your experience of top pitching and all that. But hopefully, um, hopefully we sign our first five picks right now, so they because, um. Let's call it. Hopefully, um, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm stumbling on words right now. Hopefully, we get through the season, and we. Oh my goodness! It just came through that Dallas Keuchel has signed with the Atlanta Braves. What the heck is going on? This is crazy. Oh my goodness gracious! We just got. Braves just got Dallas Keuchel. And we have the most... Uh, I'm sorry if I'm ranting a little bit on this podcast, but D- Dallas Keuchel just went to the Atlanta Braves, according to various sources on my Twitter feed. But um, we're just going to ignore that. We're going to go on with the show. But, um, yeah, let's talk about Jason Vargas. Jason Vargas last night was an absolute beauty. <laughs> What's it called? He pitched an absolute gem, getting another one for the Mets. He picked up his second win of the season. Um, he went nine innings strong, a zero earned runs, eight strikeouts, which is, I think, a, which is a um, season high for him. It's five only on five hits, Giants five hits. That's great. Uh, one hundred seventeen pitches. Jason Ovar ace. He's an absolute ace. He he is dominating this season. He um he started off on a little bit of a sketchy note actually, but um yeah I definitely like the way he's been playing lately. Um if he can keep his ear ray constantly around like the three point five area, I would absolutely love that. He Jason oh Jason Vargas Noah in the yard they are all coming around. Jason Jacob Degrom will hopefully find his groove. Um, I just hopefully, I don't know what's going on on with Jacob DeGrom. I don't know if Harris found a way to, um, I don't know if Harris found out a way to hit off him, but he's just not looking the same this year, obviously, as he is above, he is, uh, a, a bl- above a 3 ERA as compared to his 1.71 ERA was zero, uh, with all of his starts and quality starts. And this year, he already has, like, three un- uh bad starts this year that messed up his uh, record. So, it's just a very, it's, it's, an, it's an awful. Hopefully, um, Jack Wheeler has found his groove. He's being very inconsistent. He's pitching one day. He had a seven innings, like, one, uh, a few hits, zero walks, a few strikeouts. And then the other day, he just has six innings, six earned runs, 12 hits four walks, it's just, our, our pitching staff has been so inconsistent this year, as our offense has, has been as well, too, but, um, yeah, so, yeah, um, hopefully, we bounce back from everything, but, um, hopefully, our pitchers find their groove in the summer, hopefully, Zach Wheeler has the second half he did last season with the Mets, um, he had, he had the second lowest era in the second half of the 2018 season hopefully we see a little bit of that going into our very very tough june and july early july schedule hopefully he finds out um hopefully he gets his stuff down jacob de hopefully he finds his stuff hopefully jason vargas can keep us in the game sometimes hopefully noah syndergaard can get his area down to maybe three hopefully 
Um, yeah, and Steven Matz has been a little inconsistent. He has the same story as uh, Zach Wheeler. He can be great one day, bad the other day. But, um, but, um, yeah, so, what's it called? Uh, the Kike, not, not to get, um, what's it called? An, on an off relay note, Keiko is in, in agreement with his first, um, he received an offer from the Mets, but we know how that went with Craig Kimbrell. Not good, but, um, hopefully, yeah, hopefully we, um, Hopefully we bounce back. But let's go into our next segment being the Mets top thirty prospects. Let's see how they're let's see how they're doing this year. So we're gonna be checking in on some of the Mets farm system. We're gonna be talking about this for um We're gonna be talking about this for the next ten minutes. But um you gotta love it. What's it called? Um the Kingsport Mets and the Brooklyn Cyclones start their season um, in, in, a, in, a one, in a two weeks, I think. So, um, what's it called? Let me just pull up some stats from our team. And what's it called? Um, yeah, so Car- what's it called? Carlos Cortez, shortstop for the um, St. Lucie Mets, launches over a 450-foot shot at... Um, at their stadium this year, today, just today, happened 30 minutes ago. He he's hit the longest home run in in the St. Lucie Mets history. Um, but yeah, so um, what's it called? Um, yeah, so yikes. Um, so yeah, hopefully, Simeon Woods Richardson had an absolute gem the other day. He pitched for the um fire for the um. Columbia Fireflies, um, he had an absolute gem. He pitched, what's it called? He pitched six innings. He let zero hit. He had a no hitter going, but um, he he pitched over. He pitched, he uh reaches um pitch limit, which is why he's taken out, not for um his bad, um performance. He and he it was only one walk of a perfect game, through six innings. He he had he had he oh my goodness. Six innings pitched, zero hits, zero runs, one walk on eight strikeouts. This kid is amazing. Th- this kid was drafted in the second round last year. Hopefully, hopefully, what's it called? Josh Wolf progresses like this. This kid is he's insane. He's not even 20 years old yet, and he's throwing high 90s. He's just fanning batters in single A. I can't wait for this kid to make it to the major leagues. He kind of reminds me of a, um, a smaller version of Noble Syndicate. He throws gas, doesn't back down from any batter. A little bit of wild sometimes, but he didn't show any of that, any fatigue going into that three days ago against the Rome Braves in, um, Monday's outing. So, um, yeah, so hopefully he keeps that up. And, yeah, on a, another note, the Mets promoted outfielder Quinn Brody from the St. Lucie Mets to the Binghamton Rumble Ponies, being our Double A team. Um, just had to, to let you guys know about that. But um, if you guys want more minor league updates, just go to nym.miners on Instagram. But um, that's pretty much all the excuse me. That's pretty much all the minor league news we have. There hasn't been too much. But um, let's call it Andres Skimenez, our number one prospect at the moment. He used to be number two, but big uh. Pete Alonzo graduated from the prospect class, but um, he was placed on the injured list in Binghamton. He wasn't playing since Sunday when he lifted after getting hit with a pitch on his right hand, which is not a throwing arm. So hopefully, um, hopefully, um, what's it called? Hopefully, um, he gets back quickly. But um, yeah, um, yeah. So. The um, so yeah, um, the Mets have not made any progress on signing the picks yet. Usually takes a few days, but I will let you guys know, um, if we get if we get um, pick, I will let you guys know. Well, you guys know, um, but, um, let's talk about Pete Alonzo. Pete Alonzo has launched 
20 home runs. Let's let me, let me let's go to the All Star ballot. We did this last season or last um episode with Sal, but um unfortunately he's not with us anymore. Um um what's it called Pete Alonso launched 20 home runs. He is an absolute stud. He tied Mark McGuire's home run record for most home runs. For most home runs in um. Before June, he tied him with 19 home runs. He was just a few days off of the, just a few days off of the um, beating the record as he is home run a few days later. But um, yeah. So P. Alonso, who wasn't very highly ranked by the um, by the MLB pipeline, he was never really stood out in the top like 30 or top 10 prospects. He he's been making a name for himself. The reason why he wasn't called up the last few seasons is because of his defense. And his defense has been fine. He's been doing great. I can only remember one or two times he's made like a little bit of a rookie mistake throwing the ball into the outfield on a um rundown situation. But other than that, he hasn't been too, his defense hasn't been too much of a problem actually. But um it's great it's great to see a young player producing for the Mets. Um, we have him for quite a few more years. Hopefully he stays with us. Hopefully we don't trade him, which I don't think we will. He is a keeper. He definitely reminds me of just, he's like his own person. He doesn't remind me of anyone on the Mets. He, he, he doesn't make, um, hit too much for, um, contact, but he's a very power hitter. And that's what the Mets have needed. We needed a power bat. Ever since Joanna Cespedes has got injured, we've been like, Flipping for like power bats. We had Lucas Duda, then he left. Um, we had Wilmer Flores last year for a little bit in phase. We had a little bit of Jay Bruce before he got injured. It was just we were just flipping around for a four hitter. Michael Conforto got injured this year, but but Pete Alonso. It, it's definitely a close race between him and Josh Bell. Josh Bell will probably get the benefit of the doubt as he's having a a little bit of a better season and. Plus, um, Pete Alonso's average is a little bit down this season. But I definitely can see Pete Alonso being a backup for Josh Bell. But I think it all depends on how it all pans out. He def- I wouldn't definitely not be surprised if Pete Alonso got the starting spot. Because you know how us New Yorkers be, or New York fans be, for uh, voting for our fans. Mets definitely have a bigger fan base than the Pittsburgh Pirates as we are in the New York um, market. But, um, yeah, I th- Josh Bell will probably be the starter as he is much more experienced and just having overall better stats as P. Alonso is just straight power. But, um, but yeah, hopefully P. Alonso keeps it up, keeps the Mets going. He's definitely bringing a spark to the team. But, um, yeah, Michael Conforto had his, another home run the other night. Um, people are saying they don't really love our hitting coach, Chili Davis. As Michael Conforto said, he's learned more from, uh, uh, veteran second baseman Robinson Cano over the um, the few months he's been on the Mets and Chili Davis for the few months he's been a coach, so he's definitely referring to um, veteran here Robinson Cano, which is very interesting because they're both they're both very talented players. Obviously, Robinson Cano has been doing a little more than him. They're both lefties, but I just find it interesting how Michael Conforto would bring it out to the public how he would say his own teammate is a better hitting coach than his hitting coach. But I th- I think it's definitely whatever works for Michael Conforto because, um, he- he's definitely he's definitely gonna have a little bit of a tough time battling back from that injury he had earlier in the season. Hopefully he's back with that home run he had the other night. But um, it's definitely something we should keep an eye on. Um, but hopefully Michael Conforto keeps up his hard work and he's only he's he's not even twenty seven yet so. I'm not worried about Michael Conforto. Michael Conforto, P. Alonzo. We have a very good young core, but I'm just worried about when they all hit the free agency. It's just gonna, it's gonna, we're gonna have, be, we're gonna have a tough time getting them all back. Cause obviously, who doesn't love playing in New York? But at, at the same time, who doesn't, who doesn't like winning World Series? The Mets, the Mets don't really look like they're a World Series team unless we make a, tr- a huge trade for a, a, an unexpected bat. This trade deadline, which I don't think we will. Hopefully, I'm proved wrong, but, um, I definitely don't see us winning a World Series, like, soon. Hopefully, I'm wrong. Hopefully, I'm wrong, but, um, we're definitely in a weird spot right now. Um, if we keep the team we have, 
or just our team's just too inconsistent to make the postseason. Hopefully we.